This is where they get out their pens and papers. This is where you drop those gems. Can you share a few players that you're targeting in Roto this season? Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I thought about this because, again, you, you, you let me know that this question was coming. And I thought it might be interesting to tailor the answer more towards the front and middle of drafts because I actually think the back end of drafts is where head-to-head and Roto strategy kind of comes together. Like once you get past pick, oh, I don't know what it is this season. It, it fluctuates by 10, 15 slots per year. But it's probably after like pick, 95 or 105 range head to head or roto you're just you're just you're shooting for all upside at that point because again with head to head like who cares if you get some trudging player at the end that's a player you're going to turn into a streaming slot anyway and then with roto there's just no advantage to having somebody who's a low end plotter type where i think the difference is between head to head and roto in how we target players is really through the top 75. And even if you really wanted to get down to it, it's like through the top 60. Because that's where you can increase your risk factor on the game's missed side in Roto in a way that you just can't do in head-to-head. But at the same time, on the Roto side, you're also targeting players that you know have a more robust fantasy stat set. What I mean by that, and, and again, apologies for really getting deep into the weeds on this side of thing is uh, Luka Doncic is a wonderful example of a player that makes way more sense on the head to head side than on the Roto side. So I know you asked me about players that I am targeting in Roto. And the first example I'm giving is someone who I'm not. Luka is great to build a head to head team around because he's hyper elite in points, excellent in threes, very good in rebounding, particularly from a guard position, very good in assist steals are solid. Even the field goal percent for Luca is pretty good for a guard. And then turnovers, free throw percent are quite bad for him. And that's the type of player you're looking for in head-to-head. You want somebody that's giving you big, big, big advantages in four, five, six categories. And you don't care how bad they are in a couple of other ones because you'll just build around what they're good at. So on the Roto side, that's the kind of player that actually hurts you more than he helps in a lot of ways where... You want to make sure that you're as good as possible in as many categories as possible. So it's much better to start your draft by building around someone who has a more well-rounded stat set. So what I'm looking at is, and we'll just, we'll start at the very top. If Luca's a player that I think is not a particularly good fit on the Roto side, guys near the top that I think are falling too far on the Roto side Someone like like a Kyrie Irving is actually a really good example of this. Now, Yahoo has messed with me lately by moving him. His pre-rank was like 13, 14, three weeks ago, and they moved him up to eight on their most recent board. But everybody still hates him on the head-to-head side, so he's still going to likely be the value in Roto. He's a guy who plays in the mid-60s in games in a good situation, but he's good at scoring, good at threes, fine at rebounding, decent at assists, good at steals, Good at blocks for a guard, good field goal percent, great free throw percent. Turnovers are not all that high. You're getting someone who is average to good in almost every category right out of the shoot, and you're typically able to get him a half round to a round later because it's a roto league, because you can work around that kind of thing. So that's the first example I wanted to give of guys near the top that maybe it doesn't make sense to folks that play a lot of head-to-head, But Kyrie's a guy who's getting drafted a little bit too late right now. And Luca for Roto, I want to make that very specific, is a guy who's getting drafted a little bit too early. Just thinking again about how this strategically makes sense. Who do you target in Roto? Who do you not target? You're avoiding the guys that have obvious detriments in their fantasy game. And you're targeting the guys that don't have that big drop in stuff. And so for Roto, oftentimes the guys that end up being really good values are either A, the guys that are hurt a little bit more than your average player, or B, guys who are good in the categories that head-to-head players often ignore, which would be turnovers, field goal percent, and free throw percent. And the percentages are the ones that I think stand out the most in that. So let's get into the specifics a little bit more because I've monologued on strategy uh, more uh, too much in this one. So Kyrie's a guy on the good side. 
Luca's a guy kind of on the wrong side of that. As you move your way through the first couple of rounds, I think a couple other guys that I am targeting in Roto are guys like Kevin Durant and Anthony Davis, guys that are injury fears, but when they're upright, are top five per game players. And right now, with the way the board is built, you actually might be able to get both of them, which is absurd in Roto. To be able to build your team on that foundation, yeah, they're going to miss some games. It's going to happen. But you're taking care of almost every category in a big, strong way right out of the shoot, with maybe the possible exception of threes. And we know we can make up for those later on because you're so, I mean, you're so powerful in those two things. On the flip side of that, guys in the early rounds that make less sense for Roto are the guys that are getting drafted earlier because of their durability. Demonis Sabonis, Anthony Edwards are guys that I don't know that they clear the top 20 on a per game basis, but they're getting drafted around 13 or 14 because head to head players feel really comfortable that they're going to give them 75 games. And I agree with that. I think they probably do give a pretty good chunk of games played this year. But again, in Roto, what you want are the guys that are giving you the biggest possible stats for each game they use against your game's cap. And what I hope I'm doing with this sort of circuitous answer to your very straightforward question is teaching people the difference in how you draft for different formats. Pascal Siakam, better target in head-to-head. LeBron, actually, better target in head-to-head. Kawhi, Jimmy Butler, those guys, better targets in Roto as you work your way through the second, third round. Miles Turner, Kristaps Porzingis, Great targets in Roto. Vooch, actually, I think probably an example of someone that could make sense on both sides. But you're looking for these guys that where you draft them, you feel like their per game is not what you're at all worried about with them. Now, you can't take an injury-prone player in every single round. At some point, you're just going to fall too far behind in games played. So you can't like you can't go Anthony Davis, Kevin Durant, Kawhi Leonard, uh, Kristaps Porzingis, because now you're getting 60 games apiece out of your top four picks. But you could do it in two, maybe even three of those, and you just don't have to worry about it the same way because you're piling up all of these unbelievable per-game statistics. Uh, A couple of guys that are a little bit more durable that I think are falling too far in the mid-rounds, they're largely centers. I think Walker Kessler is going a little bit too deep right now after he was getting drafted in the 30s. He got dropped down to the 50s in Yahoo's latest rearrange. Uh, Nick Claxton is kind of in that same bucket as someone who we know on a per game basis is likely to beat his mark as is Jared Allen. Uh, I think Tyrese Maxey is, is destined to have a really good year because we're hearing that James Harden has no intention really of hanging out. And I think banking on some Portland trailblazers to take a nice step forward is also a pretty good move because yeah, maybe you get stuck with a little bit of drama at the beginning of the year, but Jeremy Grant, Anthony Simons, these guys are going to play I'm not that worried about Scoot taking all of the usage away from them, especially not at the beginning of the year. And in Roto, because your stats accrue over the entire season, somebody who comes out of the gate really strong and maybe fades a tiny bit at the end of the year doesn't hurt you in a way that in head-to-head, you're often looking for guys that start slow and finish stronger. That's another cool thing about Roto where I'm almost done. I promise. Uh Thinking about the Utah Jazz last year is a great example of this, where you could have sort of bought in on Mike Conley and Kelly Olynyk and these older guys playing a lot the first half of the year. In head-to-head, those guys aren't getting drafted because everybody was worried about shutdowns, and reasonably so. In Roto, you can just take those guys and cash in for the first three months and then drop them halfway through because everything they did for you those three months is still a part of your rankings as the season goes on. And that is the end of a very long speech on a very short question. I'm so sorry for talking that long. (laughs) No apologies needed. You know, I'm all about the value. So like that, that is a lot of nuggets. 